This is episode 157 of the Focused Mindset Podcast. Today, let's discuss some more questions that you can ask to help people open up to a brand new way of thinking. This is going to help your conversations, but more importantly, it's going to help you in your journaling and in your thinking to help you think more solution focused. We're going to talk about that and exactly what it took for me to move the solution focused practice from my professional world into my personal life and what big difference it made. So let's get started. Welcome to the Focused Mindset Podcast. This is the one and only podcast where you can figure out how to sort out your life using the solution-focused approach. You may have heard about it in counseling, but guess what? You can have a mindset that's full of solutions rather than filled up with all of the problems that try and overwhelm us. I'm Cher Kretz. I am a solution-focused life coach and I'm a school counselor. Here, we discuss how you can be the best version of yourself in your home and with the people you love. Jump over to my website, thefocusedmindset.com to learn more about our products and services. Hello, welcome to the podcast. This is another episode of the Focused Mindset Podcast, and I'm so excited to talk to you guys today first. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I have completely revamped my 35-day journal prompts and conversation starters. I was taking a look at it, and I realized that those of you who have already downloaded it, you have a version that you can read on your phone, but you can't make it into a worksheet so you can print it and hand it to people and have it in your car when you're driving, and I've changed that. So if you want a copy, it's going to look something like this. You can literally make a copy now. And it's also it's available in two different ways. Well, actually three different ways. One is when you pick up 30 Days to Higher Hopes, I have certain places where you can scan the QR code and then you can use the questions in my journal prompts to write in the journal. So that's one way to get it. Another way to get it is to check the show notes because I always leave a link so you can get one straight to your inbox along with my hope notes. And then three is at my website at thefocusedmindset.com. I really want everybody to be able to have this resource because many people will tell me, what are some questions that you can ask? My favorite ones are right here. If you are someone who's practicing solution-focused skills. And the other reason is because when we're journaling and we're trying to renew our mind, retrain our mind, what better way than to take a solution-focused concept, write that question down, and then just free write. Just, Just go. Now, another secret is I'm creating another journal. Hopefully, it'll be out by April, by my daughter's birthday, and it is going to be based around these 35 questions. I'm going to have each and every one of these questions with other uh, continued conversation pieces, and it can be used with family, it can be used in a classroom, it can be used just for your own personal growth. It'll be 35 solution-focused questions, journaling book, and that's coming. Now, at the end of this podcast... We're going to continue with what we've been doing, and I'm going to give you seven solution-focused journaling questions that you can use this week to help you in your conversations and in your journaling. So that's for the end right now. I'm going to tell you the story about how I fell in love with the solution-focused approach and why it makes such a huge impact in conversations. I recently wrote a blog. My February blog is up on my website now, and it's all about this. So I wanted to highlight what I talked about here with you. Many people feel disrespected, ignored, or even let down by the people that they care about most. I find in conversations that... I've shared things from my heart, and I still walk away wondering if it made any difference. This happened a lot before I found the solution-focused approach. Because what if I told you that with a few minor adjustments to how you communicate, you can make 
a way bigger impact on how you have conversations and, a, and have stronger relationships. I'm telling you, that is what happened to me. And I know it can happen to you as well. Now, just for a bit of history, solution-focused therapists help clients build hope by focusing less on their problems and more on their own unique ability to shape their future and align their values. When they do that, people are empowered. They discover the solutions that they that were always right there, but they just couldn't see it. When I became a solution-focused practitioner, I immediately noticed a big difference in my professional life. My clients literally went from struggling to noticing their growth every single time we met. My clients would email me before we even got together and say, I can't wait to tell you about the changes that I've had in my life since the last time we talked. Let me tell you, this made a huge impact on me. I knew that it was something that was in the making for quite a long time before I became a solution-focused therapist. You see, long before I understood the importance of listening. As a school counselor, being a good listener is foundational. More listening, less talking is the goal. So I would listen and they would share and I would listen, listen, and then I would share the strategies that I believed would help them thrive. Now you might think, okay, okay, they felt heard and they walked away with strategy. So what's the problem? The problem was I realized that my clients would forget what we talked about and fail to make necessary changes. They would walk away motivated with best intentions. So where was the follow through? Without putting these new strategies in practice, they were bound to fall into their same bad habits, the same habits that led them to having the problems in the first place. The reason for this lack of follow through certainly wasn't because the strategies needed fixed. I always gave strategies that are rooted in sound research. And it also wasn't because my clients didn't feel that they didn't want to do better. They wanted change in a big way. So what was the reason? It was because of how our brain remembers information. The brain can only remember a small portion of everything that we take in every day. That has been proven by research. Now we know this, but what does the brain remember? If it only takes in a little bit, what is it that it remembers? Well, unless we find information that's surprising or rings true in a personal way, what we see and, and, and hear fades into the background. It fades to the back of our memory and pretty soon it's long forgotten. So I decided to use this brain research to help me find a better approach to counseling. I was on a mission, people. I wanted to figure out how to help people remember and implement new strategies. It had to be possible. And my research brought me to the solution-focused brief therapy approach. And I learned the power of solution-focused therapy because it takes a very special and unique interest in the client's best hopes, in the client's preferred future. And I began using this new approach if every single interaction, I adopted it into my mindset. And now I believed in my clients in a brand new way. Now I can see that it's trickled into every single part of my professional life. My school counseling practice leveled up immediately. The more my students identified with their strategies that they could believe in, the more they achieved. And when I went all in, I, I decided to get certificated as a solution-focused life coach. It just changed the way that I approached working with people. I realize now that it wasn't enough for me to be just an active listener as a counselor. I had to learn to take that next step. I had to learn to help people find their authentic solutions. And I realized that it's about opening their eyes to the strategies that are hidden beneath the surface. It's about believing in them and helping them believe in themselves. Ultimately, the solution-focused approach works because each of us are unique individuals. From day one that we, from the, from basically the day that we are born until the day that we die, we are making choices for what we want to do and what we don't want to do. Even a baby is like, look, 
I'm not being picked up right now. Time to cry. We don't make that choice for them. They make that choice for themselves. For the better or for the worse, we shape our lives with our choices. So I just made this huge shift and I decided that no longer am I going to share my expert opinion. I'm going to look at my client as the expert of their own life. Now, that is not to say that I never, ever share my opinion. That's ridiculous. It's a mindset shift that helps me stop and pause and literally let them think through things. But of course, there comes a time when I'm able to, with a lot more uh, clarity, with a lot more sensitivity, with a lot more information that I've gathered beforehand, share my expertise, if you will. But it changed because I didn't look at that as my job. I know what I know. And part of my expertise was knowing when to share it. Being patient enough to wait and not just jump in and blurt out everything I know and then wonder why it doesn't even make a difference when they walk away. They walk away thinking, oh, wow, she's really smart. Is that really my goal? They can think that I'm really smart, completely forget most of what I said. I'd rather them remember what I said because when I do say it, it's after a time of listening and a time of us discussing and them talking my expertise shifted. My expertise became starting uh, to become the person who's able to help other people shift to a different mindset. But how did this happen? People say, what did you actually do? It took practice. It's not easy, but it started more or less by asking different types of questions. Questions like, Can you think of a time this problem was not bothering you quite so much? Or tell me what would be different if this wasn't a problem in your life. Or another one I use, and I love this one, when you're at your best, what are you doing differently? Or what would you be doing differently if you had everything that you hoped for? And the magic is being patient enough to let them find out the answer to that question and waiting for them to answer. It takes practice. It seems simple. However, it takes discipline to stop yourself from sharing a good solution when it pops in your mind and the other person's talking. It takes self-control to allow that person to keep working on the problem rather than solving it for them. And I realized that being solution-focused wasn't about listening as much as it is about listening for the moments that they realize that they're capable of learning and solving their problems. It's listening for those moments that are a a little bit different than the other ones where they shed light on how they make changes in their life and then finding out how they can truly put that into practice. But it didn't take me long to realize there is more to this. If it made such a big difference in my professional life, what would happen if I put it to practice in my personal life and I started using the same solution-focused strategies with my loved ones, with my kids, with my brothers and sisters, with all of my interactions? I realized it was tough, but when I was able to have the type of patience that it takes to really listen and help people bring out their very best, my relationships changed. I was not only getting more out of the conversation, but they felt like they were getting what they wanted from me. We grew closer. I became the person that they wanted to call, not because I was going to share what I know, but because of the conversation, the richness of the conversation. And this is when I knew that everybody needs to live solution focused. My relationships were growing stronger. I felt closer to those I loved. I began to watch my mindset take a turn for the better. And the more I lived solution focused, the more I trained my mind to look at solutions in my own life rather than problems. My own problems seemed like they faded into the background because of me using that approach. Why do you think I talk about journaling so much and specifically solution focused journaling? It made an impact on me long before it made an impact on those that have bought my book and those that have used them in my groups. 
But it wasn't something that came naturally to me, and it won't come natural to you either. Naturally, we do think about the next thing we are going to say. It takes a lot of training and practice and all that good stuff. I mean, think about it. Solution-focused therapists take years to master their skill. But don't worry. I'm here to help. I have developed the three simple strategies, three simple steps to help people communicate better in a solution-focused way. Everybody can use these steps to live more solution-focused. And you've heard me talk about it before. It's the GPS life system. The G stands for gather your hopes. Gather without judgment. The P stands for plan with a purpose. And the S stands for soar into their future. Now, if you're doing that for yourself, you're thinking about gathering your own thoughts before you open your mouth and talk, before you even enter your day without judgment. That is the tricky part. I was talking to a client the other day and they said, no matter how many great things I have going on, when I sit in silence, I hear this voice, little, this little voice whisper in my head of like, are you really worthy? Do you really think that you should be doing this? That is the talk that you leave leave somewhere away, way, way far away from you. And you gather thoughts without judgment, with curiosity instead. Then if you're doing this for yourself, you are going to allow yourself to plan. What would I do if I did things differently? And then you'll make a commitment to soar into the future. How does this work in conversations? Much the same way, except you're focused on the other person rather than you. You see, you're saying, let me gather. Let me gather information from this person. Let me ask more questions. Let me see it from their point of view. Now, what if I have an opportunity to help them solve this with the things that they've already told me? And you say, oh, I wonder, have you thought of any plan? Have you thought of any way that you might get through this? And you're watching them work on solving the problem themselves. And then you say, then you encourage them to try it out to soar in their future. And when you think while you're talking to someone, I'm going to gather information, we're going to plan with purpose and we're going to soar. It actually changes how you approach the conversation. You become less selfish as you talk. You become selfless and focused on the person that you're talking to, which is really the point in the first place. I've noticed a lot of self-help blogs or uh, posts borrow information from the solution focused practice. I'm not offended. I think it's great. I think everybody should use it. I just wish that more of them would give credit to where credit's due. It is the solution focused brief therapy that teaches therapists first to look at the other person as that expert of their own life. Now, when I see posts that talk about you being true to you and listening to yourself and all of this, I say, yes, let's do it. But I also realize that it's rooted in an approach that was built way back in the 80s and 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 in therapists all over the world began to see a huge difference in their clients success so yes we should live solution focused we should live being able to gather without judgment our thoughts and the thoughts from others we should be able to plan and plan knowing that there's a purpose to that and it lines up in our values and then we should take action soaring forward. There's no doubt about it that this is something that helps us feel more peaceful, alive, and centered. So there's several different ways that you can find more information. This entire uh, talk that we did was based on my latest blog called Solution Focused for Life. And you can find that on thefocusedmindset.com. You can also jump over to Amazon and pick up 30 Days to Higher Hopes. It is a great resource to train your mind to think in such a way that's going to be helpful to you. 30 Days to Higher Hopes is available now on Amazon. And I'm excited. I'm excited every time I'm saying, wow, you picked up my book? Wow, how did it go for you? And as I continue to write um, my book that's, uh, that's more traditional, I feel like the journals are the things that will still always make the biggest impact because we need to find that wisdom within us. Many times my writings are just a prayer. 
because I lean on that higher power and I know that God speaks to me as I write out a prayer. Nonetheless, I'm the one that needs to choose to pick up the journal and write that prayer and read it back. No one's going to do it for me. And journaling is always going to be the thing that will help you grow. The other thing is get involved with learning more. You can do that through joining my email community. Basically, I just send out a Hope Notes newsletter to you with all the latest solution-focused information. You can look in the links in wherever you're listening to this podcast or on YouTube, and you'll see a link there. Or you can find it at my website, thefocusedmindset.com. The third way is, I said two ways. What's the third way? Oh, by following the show. (laughs) Following this podcast, wherever you listen, follow it, share it. Okay. Uh, So you can talk about it with others. Yes. That's a wonderful way to get more information. That's funny. Here I am on the podcast and I forget um, the most obvious way that you can continue to get more information. So let's move into, before I say goodbye, giving you the next seven solution-focused questions. These are for better conversation and for journaling. Question one, what will others notice on the day that I am my best self? Question two, what is the value that I hold most dear? Question three, what would a perfect day look like and what am I doing in that day? Question four, what can I do to help others feel more hope today? Question five, what is something new that I am curious to learn about? Question six, what thoughts have brought me closer to my highest hopes? And question seven, if I could get rid of the fear about this, what would be different? Take those questions, you can pause in between each one, write it in your blank journal, uh, discuss it with your family, your friends, use it as a discussion point because it'll help you be more solution focused. So it's time for me to get going and I hope you make today amazing. And until next time, live solution focused. Before you go, don't forget to check the show notes where I'm going to leave the links to my social media and the different places you can find me. And I want to invite you to be a part of my email community. It's absolutely free. And this year I'm doing so much writing and so much reflecting, and I want to send things directly to you. I send the special notes to my email community and you can email me right back. You have a direct line to ask me questions without any barriers of a website or anything. Check the show notes for that link or go to thefocusedmindset.com. And if you click on getting the journal prompts, you also automatically are able to be a part of my community. And if you're interested in supporting this program, there's three ways to do it. One, make sure you're following this program so it comes up as one of your favorites. Two, share it either on your social media or with someone you love straight to their email. And the third is to leave a review. And I love reading those. By supporting this program, we're helping people be solution-focused. See you next week.